So, believe it or not, I am actually trying to be a grown-up, and one of those things I am doing in my new role as a grown-up is having a schedule. And according to my schedule, today was a recording day, but you know what I really didn't feel like doing? I really didn't feel like sitting here for a frustrating hour, trying to be all intellectual, trying to get my words in, in a straight line, and then editing, 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 and then YouTube demonetizing it because of the fact that talking about anything remotely important gets demonetized. So I thought, you know what, you know what, screw it, screw it. On my adult scheduled recording day, I'm going to get baked and we are just going to gossip about the old days. That is what we are going to do because what I, what I want to talk about really um, in this video was a, a lot of first times and things on the goth scene. Um, <laughs> because something that I'm realizing recently is the sheer amount <laughs> that my parents let me do when I was really quite young. Um, and I think when, you know, when you're a teenager and this is your experience, you don't really realise that it's weird, because when you're that young, that's the only life you've ever lived. You think it's normal. And it's only when you get to, like, my age and people around you start having their own kids and, you you, you know, people, people are calling you mom on Instagram and stuff, and, uh, and you start to think, Ooh, ooh, that was that was a bit of a strange, a strange thing to let such a young teenager do. That I hear from so many people on Instagram saying, you know, oh, I, you know, I've only just been able to dye my hair at the age of like twenty or something when I've moved out because my mum wouldn't, won't let me dress this way, won't let me dye my hair, won't let me listen to these records, won't let me watch these movies. Whereas in my case, it was like, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my parents would would literally they wouldn't stop me doing anything and they would even drive me out to nightclubs that I was underage <laughs> to be in. Like, I was like 14 years old. You had to be like 18 plus to get in. 14 years old, yeah, yeah, I'll give you to a lift to the nightclub to go hang out with a load of 21-year-old guys that you met at a gig like a week ago but you don't really know at all. And uh, yes, you can totally go dressed like a like a PVC-clad hooker. That's no problem. Oh, would you like some money as well? <laughs> this was kind of my my growing up, which if you're, if you're kind of young, that probably probably sounds like absolute heaven. Um, and it, it certainly was good. Like, I I don't know how I would have got on, honestly, if my parents had have been stopping me just when I was finally discovering who I was and, you know, developing an identity outside of being just like the bullied kid, you know, the bland ass fucking bullied kid. Suddenly it was like, I know who I am and I'm going to go and find my people. And I think, you know, if my parents had have been like, no, you've got to stay in this shitty little town where nobody likes you and you can't have a life and, and all of that, maybe that maybe I would have just killed myself. I don't know. Um, so maybe it was good that I got to go out, but there there were there were some downsides as well um that you don't really see until you get older um to, to having all of this freedom. But anyway, I just wanted to have a bit of a waffle about the old days. And as a result, this this may end up being quite a long video. So if you want to just plug in your headphones and make this a fucking waffly ASMR bedtime waffle, feel free. So jumping in with with first times on the goth scene, I guess starting with my first ever ventures out were, I think, I think either late 1999 or early 2000, I'm not sure, but the kind of the cusp of the millennium. Um, and fortunately, my eldest brother um, was, was always into into kind of like metal-y stuff. We were sort of edging, edging into goth a bit. He had some goth mates, but he's mostly a metaler. When I was like 14, 15, he was 24, 25. So he was like peak clubbing age, um, just as I was like young enough to, to basically be snuck into a club without arousing too much suspicion. Um, so he started taking me out. And I think the first thing he ever took me to was a Cradle of Filth gig, um, which was was so cool because I got to go and stay with him and his university friends in Liverpool and that was so cool to me at that point like the idea of this this house with all your friends in there were because there were about four or five of them I think in this one house in Liverpool I was like how cool is that though I mean like I've never had four or five friends in my entire life since I was like seven years old <laughs> but you know how cool would it be to have like five whole friends and they all live in the house with you and you go out to clubs and gigs and stuff 
and oh my god your life is so cool and I want this and I feel a little bit sad I feel like I feel like I'm kind of letting down my kind of starry-eyed teenage self by the fact that I've never lived in like a big house share like ever I've I've I mean, I've lived with I lived with a boyfriend, so I, you know, lived lived with a with a friend, and all of that. But it wasn't like the the big buzzing energy of like a, a bunch of people in a house. I thought it was it was the coolest thing to me then. And then going out to see Cradle of Filth and all of that, which admittedly like they were too laid back. I thought, yeah, you know, we're gonna go to a gig, we're gonna be like stage diving, we're gonna be moshing, we're gonna be in the pit. And uh, my my brother. Well, you know, he well, he was like 24, 25 by this point, so, you know, he, he just wanted to stand at the back and, you know, quietly nod his head, sip his beer, and I really, I just, I wanted to be down there doing that, but I also didn't want to go and do it on my own or be seen as, like, naive and uncool and overexcited. It's like, they all look jaded and cool, so I'm just going to have to stand here and look jaded and cool, but I really wanted to go and mosh but it's not a good idea at Cradle of Filth gigs if they if they even play live anymore I don't know if they do but I went to another one of their gigs uh without my brother um a few months later and this time I was like I'm here by myself you know I'm gonna get in the pit and I got right down the front uh before the band came on and the minute the band started playing oh fuck me Cradle of Filth fans are scary. Uh, all of these massive, massive metalers covered in gigantic spikes started raining from the fucking skies. And I was just like running backwards out of there. Like, I'm going to die in here. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's it's a good idea not to be, not to be at the front at uh, Cradle of Filth gig. But uh, anyway, my, my first, my first real like oh my god this is this is an adventure was again with my brother up in Liverpool and it was my first ever adventure to a kind of goth metal alternative club which was the crazy house in Liverpool it's literally the one and only time I've ever been there it was like my first ever kind of clubbing adventure ever and if it's still there I really should go back someday just to see if it's anything like how it was because for me like my first ever I mean I'd never been to any kind of club like if you're the bullied kid you don't go to like youth clubs you don't go to like underage nights or any of that shit um so I'd never been in a nightclub at all so going to one I <laughs> I had very weird expectations for nightclubs like I at this point, the only drug I had ever done was like I'd tried weed on one occasion. That that was it. But I had been fixated on drugs for a number of years already. You know, screwed up kid. Um, and my expectation was that anyone going to a nightclub goes there to do drugs. Like there's there's literally nobody goes to a nightclub without taking hard drugs. Like like ecstasy was was what I mostly suspected. And this was my belief to the extent that when we first got there and my brother took our coats and he said, right, I'm just going to the cloakroom. I was convinced this was some kind of code to his friends for like, I'm going to go score some drugs, then I'll be back with them. And when he came back without the coats and, and he was like, right, who wants a pint? I was like, R really? Really? Like, I didn't say this to him, obviously, but I was like, seriously? Like, you don't, like, everyone doesn't just, like, stuff ecstasy down their throats at nightclubs. I thought that was the purpose of nightclubs. But uh, because this was what I thought was going to happen on this particular night, I remember being just so fucking nervous and I still remember like getting ready um in one of their it was like this huge old it was like this amazing old creaky like gothic house with all these like weird spooky attic rooms it was just this house that like went up and up and up and um I had one of these attic rooms with with like a little mirror and it was quite dim in there and all I had to get ready with was literally like one coal pencil because I, I I think I'd I was really new to wearing makeup and I wasn't even like blending it out with eyeshadow and also it was really hard to find black lipstick in those days so I would just use coal pencil for that as well which kind of works but it goes a bit like blobby and icky looking after a while and you have to just wipe the whole mess off and start again and for god's sake don't kiss anyone in it because it's a hot mess also nobody wore foundation in those days really um so you you had like nothing no base on this coal pencil 
nothing to set it so it would like seep all greasily into the lines under your eyes and you you just basically looked like the Joker by the end of the night. It, it was it was not a good look but I'd been you know I'd been doing this in the upstairs room and I don't think my brother or his friends had ever seen me like goffed up before <laughs> or like as goffed up as you get when I don't I don't think I'd even dyed my hair black at this point my hair was still brown um so I, I just had like really shit like panda scribbles shit shit lipstick <laughs> and uh and they, they'd never seen me goffed up before so I was like oh I'm making I'm making my 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 big my big kind of announcement oh here's me and uh and I came out of the bedroom and they were like oh that's cool that's cool and um and we we left and we we got in this this big this big taxi you know one of the ones that's so huge that you can fit about five or six people it's like a big limo I was like oh you know the city lights were sliding by outside and I was like oh my god and I was I was literally so like nervous excited I remember like I was shaking and it was it was winter um so I was like trying to pass it off as just like I'm cold but I was literally like shaking because I was so nervous because I was like oh my god we're going to a club yeah we're, we're gonna do so many drugs this is gonna be crazy and um our first stop was this little this little pub which was like the kind of the the official kind of gothy local pub I think it was called the Black Horse maybe Liverpool people tell me if I'm right or not but um I remember going in there and my brother was immediately like, what are you drinking? And I was like, water. And he was like, oh, no, I'm not buying you water. No, you can't have water. You're drinking. And uh, <laughs> I should really remind him of this now. Now that he's actually a father of two daughters, I should remind him that when I, as a 14 year old child, said, I want to drink water, he, he forced vodka down my throat. Um, but but no, it's, it's weird. Like I, I wanted to go out and take ecstasy, but at the same time, alcohol, <laughs> I didn't want that. Like I was, I was like, I'm nervous enough already. Like I, I don't want to potentially end up feeling like really drunk and really weird and having to deal with this whole like altered perception and uh, and I didn't say any of that I just sat there and you know kind of slightly sipped my my forced vodka and coke but this this was the moment that I think every goth person has but particularly goth girls goth females any, anyone who's grown up a goth girl I think all of us have this moment. Tell me, tell me, do we all have this moment? The moment when you first see a genuinely iconic goth girl and you're like, oh my god, she is everything I want to be. And for probably a lot of people these days, that moment happens online. Like it's probably just you, you see someone in a photo or in a video and you're like, oh my god. But for me, this moment was that moment sitting, sitting I can still see where we were sitting. We were sitting like in this, this little kind of corner booth. And, um, and she was just over there. There was like, she was sitting at the bar and she was just perfect she had this this like long black hair this gorgeous makeup and you know she had she was drinking I think Smirnoff ice some kind of alco pop and she was just like swigging it back and I didn't know then that alco pops were actually piss weak I was like oh my god look at her like she's just drinking she doesn't care about it I'm too scared to like drink my fucking vodka and coke but she's just drinking and she's so free and look at her boobs and she's in this like tiny dress but it's so like effortless but so like goth queen at the same time and uh she had a guy next to her presumably her boyfriend and I don't remember a thing about him like it was it was the spotlight was like completely on her and I don't think she was being particularly attentive to this guy either like you could tell that she knew that she was like the hottest girl <laughs> in the room if not the city and she could have anyone in that place and so that the guy at her side there was this very I guess kind of dominatrix vibe about her this this is just just some kind of like massive massive like eulogy to this this gorgeous girl but no there, there was this this kind of like slightly like dominatrix vibe about her that like there's there's this guy you know, and he's like buying her drinks and she's just like there and she's she's just she's got all the power and she's she's gorgeous and Anna, I was just like watching her and thinking oh my god she's amazing and uh you know if, if if this was like now you'd probably be able to like find you know the local event listings and track this person down but back then it was like you know you, you don't know them and I, I would be fascinated like what what became of, of this girl who who was just having a normal freaking pint on a Friday or Saturday night and 
uh, but became this 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 icon to me just just doing that but uh anyway eventually we we left we left the pub and went onwards to the club and uh and I, th I think it was like one of my first times really like walking through a city um on a saturday night um you know and it's so like big and loud you know and there's music coming out of all the doorways and there's the smells of like booze and cigarettes and people are really drunk and rowdy and laughing and and it's it's quite scary but at the same time when you're with like a big group of people and they're older than you and they're taking care of you you feel that it's this this weird kind of like all oh, the words oh, the world is quite scary but i've got my posse and they're gonna keep me safe kind of feeling it was lovely and um we we had had a contingency plan because obviously there was a high likelihood that they wouldn't let me in the club at all due to being underage but uh, apparently the crazy house didn't give a shit about that so they let us all in we didn't have to split up and some of them take me home we went in and uh yeah as i say my my brother went to uh find the cloakroom, which as I say, I thought was code for I'm going to go and buy a lot of Class A drugs. <laughs> and then, no, it turns out he was just going to the literal cloakroom. Um, and uh, and yeah, we, we, we had quite a good time. I was too nervous to like dance in front of my brother, even though I've never been nervous about dancing in goth clubs, like doing it with my brother. It was like, he's going to mock me. Like he's seen me as like, like an awkward freaking four-year-old like I can't I can't try and be cool in front of him I'm just not even gonna try but um I literally only found this literally about four days ago I finally finally after over half of my life I finally found what the song was that I liked that night because there was one particular song that was playing in the main rock room and everyone was just going crazy and headbanging to it. But back in those days, if you liked a song, you couldn't just Google lyrics or anything. That, that song would be a mystery to you forever. But the other day, I had Deezer just playing random tracks that had spewed off the end of something I'd listened to and suddenly this intro started and I was like, hang the fuck on hang the fuck on that's the crazy house song that's the crazy house song that i remember from when i was 14 years old 20 years ago and uh and it was and um you, you're gonna think i'm thick as shit but it was pantera walk um <laughs> which obviously is is like played to death now at, at rock clubs and stuff but like then back in like 99 2000 like everyone just just went went crazy to us this crazy crazy room full of people and we were next to the speakers all night and i remember that was my first experience with what i refer to as the tinnitus lullaby the post clubbing tinnitus lullaby um you know when you go home and you lie down in the silence and it's just and it's horrible and um that was that was my first experience of it but i remember like when we when we'd got back and uh lying in bed and there was there was like this kind of like kind of speckly glass window in the in the funny little room they'd stuck me in there was like a like a street lamp outside all kind of golden in the dark and you, you could tell it was like the kind of hour of night that you don't really see when you're that age like you know you, you don't see the small hours really if you stay up till midnight it's a big deal and uh you know this this must have been about 3 a.m or something and it was like a different a different color of night outside and this ringing in my ears and like this the smell of like smoke and and hairspray and beer all kind of like soaked into my hair and i was like wow this is this is like this is like a different world. This is the beginning of a different world. And that was so cool. And I've waffled at you for half an hour already. So I guess I had better move on rather rapidly to another first time. And uh, that is my first kiss, which uh, was was a bit of a bit of a weird, <laughs> a bit of a weird situation to be a person's first kiss. So at this point, I'd started going out um, in the local area, sometimes by myself, um, and sometimes with one or the other of kind of a couple of school, more like acquaintances than friends, but they'd kind of got into goth too. We didn't really have anything else in common at all, but it was kind of like, okay, you're, you're someone to kind of go to clubs with. My first kiss, to get to the point, um, was at a Sisters of Mercy gig in 2001. It's the one that I have the hoodie from so I can actually give you the exact date. Yeah they were in Birmingham on the 20th of February 2001 so that was the night of my first kiss. So on this particular night I had gone instead with my other kind of gothy school acquaintance who uh, was female and um, 
I think her mum was quite strict. I'm not quite sure how she'd managed to, <laughs> to slip this whole thing by her mum that night and come out with this, but she was like, oh my god, like, you know, the minute she got in that venue, she was, she was just like, up to mischief and, and like I was going to be dragged along on on whatever happened I remember like we, we got ready to oh my god literally we got ready together in this in this in this fucking room dude this is where we got ready together um and I remember like she borrowed one of my pairs of stripy tights literally the stripy tights I still have to this day I wore the purple ones because they were my favorite so she would have worn the red ones red and black stripy tights and uh, she borrowed one of my long black velvet um black rose like black rose cam and dresses that's where you basically got all of your shit from in those days was the black rose in camden it was a like a huge kind of goth emporium thing and ah oh, dude it makes me so sad though like the the quality of clothes in those days it was just shapeless shit it was just cheap like crushed velvet like shapeless sack like shit and given i was really quite skinny then i think that's one of the things that's made me quite good at modifying clothes these days was because I had to at that point that everything if I wanted it to have any shape I had to slit the side off and sew all the way back up it to like give it any shape but the you know the clothes that I have these days oh my god like if if I could just summon up if I could if I could summon up you know literally in this room in this room where they used to live too like my, my little kitty self used to live here too you know their little ghost is still swirling around the place if I could summon them up and be like, dude, dude, do you want to see what is in our closet right now? Do you want to see what's in there? Do you, do you want to borrow this tonight? Do you want to borrow this to go to the Sister Mercy gig? Oh, how sweet would that be? Because they would lose their fucking mind over the clothes we have now. But anyway, I had, uh, I had lent her one of my black velvet dresses I was wearing, my favourite one, and, uh, and we, we, we got a lift with my stepdad, and in we went to the venue, and like, so she was just off like a fucking mischief rocket. She was like immediately, you know, off to the bar, you know, we're, 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 we're gonna get drunk, what can we afford? You know, we, she wanted Alco Pops, um, and it was the Carling Academy in Birmingham, and oh my god, they were rip-off artists. Um, we, we couldn't get drunk because it was too expensive to, to buy any drinks at all, really. So I think, I think we had one, maybe two drinks each. But because we couldn't afford to get drunk, that sparked her next bit of mischief, which was we look hot, we're gonna find some guys to buy us drinks. So she like grabs me by the hand, if I recall correctly, and like starts towing me off through the crowds um, until she finds two guys who she deems hot enough. So, um, God, I actually remember their names. Fuck it, I'll use their real names. Because um, I, I don't know them. I don't know if they're still out there. So their names were Chris and Tyrone. It turned out Chris was this really, he was admittedly really hot. Um, this, this kind of like, you, you know, you know the episode of Buffy when Spike is like in the 70s and he's like this punk. That was what Chris looked like. Not not bleached hair, but he had like the, the spiked bone structure. He had the like the brown spiked hair. He had this this like uh this leather jacket with with all of these slogans on. He had Brummy Bolshevik written on the back. I remember this because we hung out a lot afterwards. That's the next the next part of things. But um he you know he was like the hot guy, so naturally she zeroed in on him. And his friend Tyrone, honestly, nobody could tell whether Tyrone was hot because Tyrone was in corpse paint and corpse paint is is rarely done well these days so back then where with like the shitty quality products you could get back then corpse paint looked terrible in the early 2000s so tyrone is is just this 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 kind of like you know gooped up black and white mess um but you know he, he seems like a fairly cool guy and um my friend has, has decided well if we're going to get drinks out of these guys and also we are off the leash for tonight you know my my mum's not going to come zooming in and stop me so uh she she immediately uh i don't know i don't know in some way propositions these guys and starts snogging chris at which point uh i'm kind of like oh okay well i i i guess i guess i'm kissing tyrone then okay why not and uh i'd never i'd never kissed anyone before not 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 even not even like a peck on the lips nothing um and we go straight in with the snogging and i, I just remember thinking this is a really weird sort of feeling. This is very, so you know, sort of, sort of like slugs wrestling, isn't it? This is sort of, sort of wet and slug-like. And uh, 
uh, you know, is, is, there, is there a particular dance one does with one's tongue? You know, is, is anyone supposed to be going in and out more than anyone else? I, I don't really know. But anyway, so, so, that, so that was, there was that for a while. I, I, you know, I, I clearly wasn't, wasn't, you know, thinking, oh my God, wow, I've been, this, is, this is what life is about. I was just thinking, this is a weird, weird ritual. This really is. Um, and anyway, once, once, uh, once we'd, we'd kissed for a little bit, well, we swapped partners. And then I, and then I kissed Chris and she kissed Tyrone. So my, my first kiss uh, was immediately a first snog and also uh, a, an immediate group snog. So <laughs> that was my first kiss at uh, the Sister Mercy gig. And uh, Chris, Chris was a much more kind of violent kisser. I remember like he was really like, like his tongue was trying to like punch your tongue down the back of your fucking throat. Um, <laughs> but he was really hot. So anyway, I think we got some drinks out of them. But more importantly... Um, uh, she, she was she was very very wise for her age. Um, this this friend, but uh, more importantly, she had secured us some shoulders to sit on in the crowd because it was quite a big crowd. I mean, it was it was the Sister Mercy in two thousand and one. It was a big crowd. Um, and uh, so yes, we we got shoulders to sit on. I think I was sitting on Chris most of the time. So uh, somehow I had bartered my way into being with the hot guy or maybe she just didn't like the fact that Chris kissed like he was trying to punch your tongue down the back of your throat maybe that was it I don't know but I remember sitting on on Chris's shoulders and and you know everyone being like first and last and always and all of this oh it was a lovely fucking gig I mean Andrew Aldrich showed up for once you know so so that's a start and uh, oh it was, a, it was a lovely lovely fucking gig and uh and then obviously we we exchanged numbers with Chris and Tyrone and we came out and my stepdad as I recall was uh sitting in his car waiting for us right outside the venue like super super diligent this this is the thing see if you're a girl and you're going to clubs as a teenager I feel like your your parents if they're gonna let you go at all it's they kind of have to give you a lift because it's so unsafe for you to do anything else like if you're a guy it's it's like look you you go if you want to go do stupid things you you sort yourself out but if you're a girl it's like uh, do you really want me taking the night bus and all of that? And they'll give you a lift. So my stepdad was waiting there and there was a t-shirt seller. Um, so this is probably not official merchandise. This is probably like cheap knockoff um, kind of illegal merchandise. But I was like, I have to have a t-shirt. And it was really expensive. I think this was literally £20 in, uh, in 2001. But it's a hoodie and it's huge. And you can see how much it's been worn because I always used to wear a backpack and therefore the back of it is fucked. But I love Love, love this hoodie and I'm never getting rid of it. It's going to be with me until it falls to bits. So anyway, in, in the weeks that followed, I, uh, you know, I, I now had kind of, kind of a semi-pseudo boyfriend and certainly somebody cool and older to go and hang out at clubs with. So uh, I, I would have to kind of, kind of, um, embellish, <laughs> embellish the truth a little bit uh, to my mum when I wanted to go out and meet him at clubs. Um, you know, she'd be like, so who are you, who are you meeting there? And I, I would throw in like a load of imaginary girls' names. I'd be like, so, okay, so I'm seeing like Liz and Jane and Sophie and Chris, you know, <laughs> so then there'd be like all these imaginary girls and, and then the guy I was actually going to see. Um, and uh, uh, they, they would they would give me a lift, uh, you know, dressed in my PVC hooker dress and my my crazy stripper boots, and uh, generally generally like like just just total total jail bait. And uh, oh, have some money, have some money for drinks, you know. <laughs> Your kid is 14 or 15. Like, like, is this a good idea? I don't know. But uh, anyway, yes. Uh, yeah, we 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 spent quite a few a few nights in uh, in a club called XLs, which is sadly closed now. It was mostly a kind of kind of rock club more than a goth club, but it was it was. I mean, it was it was kind of like just just this 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 kind of crystallized moment of exactly what like alternative culture in 2000 was that you know excels even if it hadn't have been shut down fairly early on in things like there's no way it would still be alive today because it was just this this melting pot of kind of skater kids and mosher kids and you know kind of goth types in in trip pants and 
you know, kind of corn hoodies and all the baggy trousers and all the big braids and everything and loads of head banging. I don't seem to see head banging on dance floors anymore, but there was a lot of that there and you'd get mosh pits going on and it was, it was kind of little mosher skater kiddies who you, it's like a subculture that's just fucking disappeared. You know, they, they used to play a lot of kind of new metal and stuff. Like any time I hear Linkin Park crawling, particularly like I am right back in Excels. Um, and, uh, also, um, what, what are they called? You know, that Miss Jackson song, uh, Outcast Miss Jackson, they played that a lot too. Um, any, like those two songs, they just take me back there and like I'm immediately sitting in one of our dark corners and there'd be kind of the dance floor over there and the walls were black and there were these like big red pillars and just all these kind of mosher kiddies and I, I would be sitting with Chris with with like his you know his leather jacket with with like Brummy Bolshevik written on the back in in white tip x and um and uh you know I was I was just like awed by like everything he said because you know he was what like five or six years older than me I you know and he was he was already at uni and he was he was studying like political stuff so he could he could just spew this this like basic first year uni like politico stuff at me and I was just like oh my god you're so cool and so impressive and so hot and because uh, <laughs> I I'm pretty sure I was already like a big Manic Street Preachers fan at that point so basically anyone who could talk politics with like scathing eloquence I was like that's hot <laughs> and um and and Chris could really do that so we, we would kind of alternate alternate between me just being awed by him talking basically and uh and then kind of make out sessions and I, I just remember he he always like he drank carling and he would be like smoking the whole time because no smoking ban back then so he always tasted of like cold fizzy carling and cigarette smoke which sounds revolting but I, I still remember it and I think like yeah like and the way he smelled too, like he always smelled of like cigarettes and leather and that, that like I hate the smell of like I don't date smokers anymore it's just like ugh grow up but like back then it was like oh you're so hot with your leather jacket and you're smoking and your your politics and um so uh so I, I remember I do remember things things getting quite gropey in those corners and quite one-sidedly gropey too because I didn't really know what one does in those situations when one is a girl. Does one reciprocate? What does one do? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, just gonna keep kissing you and let you get on with, with, you know, with, with the what you're doing. Um, Anna. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't remember ever enjoying it. I just, I just remember thinking, like it's, it's deeply uncool to. To say no, like m much as you know, these days, like you know, a being asexual seems to be such a thing for like teenagers. Like it's 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 cool to be any part of the queer community, even if it means you're like an asexual who doesn't have sex. That's that's seen as like quite a cool thing now. Whereas back then, it was it was that was not it at all. Like on the goth scene, particularly like bisexuality was the thing that was worshipped it was like you know you you have to be up for all kinds of sex you, you have to be into bondage you have to be into kink you have to try all that stuff and ideally you should you should be up for fucking boys and girls that's the thing that's cool um i think there's there's something about it in um poppy zed bright's lost souls about about you know bisexuality being cool on the scene everyone trying it out even if they weren't really into it and uh, and it was the same it was the same here so to me it was like virginity is an embarrassment you want to get rid of that don't say don't say no to anything um just just uh just just yeah just just um just get on with it just get on with it and get as much experience under your belt as you possibly can um but he, he could he couldn't he could not find the clip i don't quite know what he was trying to do but he couldn't find the clip and uh he was deeply unsubtle about the places that, that these things would go on. Sometimes we weren't in gloomy corners. Sometimes we were sitting in places and, you know, on the way home, I'd be thinking, oh, but from that angle, there was some kind of old guy just sitting over there and he would have seen like everything. And oh, that's fucking gross. So anyway, I, I would be coming out of these these clubs eventually. Um, and like, I, I remember like I'd be coming out of these clubs at like two o'clock in the morning or something, like 14, 15 years old. Um, and like walking, 
walking back up this like creepy subway to to see my like my stepdad's car in the distance and I'm like zipping <laughs> zipping my top back up my my skirt used to have like a zip that went up it as well so I'd have to like zip my skirt down zip my top up like mm, try and put the lipstick back in an okay place but my, my stepdad is so unobservant like it, it's unfucking believable um in 2004 um when I made Cointreau jelly for a New Year's Eve party so we were eating booze and drinking booze and everybody got fucked up and uh, I went home wearing my new rocks on the wrong feet and I, I could feel something was weird but I knew if I if I leant down to examine it I was gonna barf so I'm like clutching a bucket new rocks on the wrong feet completely pissed off my face the next day <laughs> my stepdad says you were right last night you were very quiet in the car and uh I was I was like uh, I felt a bit sick, I was a little bit drunk, and he was like, what? But you're never drunk! And I was thinking, are you serious, dude? Are you serious? Because, sure, I never was drunk, but he gave me lifts home on many of the first occasions that I ever took ecstasy, and at one point, I remember flipping out about the fact that I'd just seen a badger running up the side of the thing, and then a few minutes later I was convinced that a gigantic bird had just flown into the front of the car and I was like whoa did you why didn't you stop for that bird and I was thinking hang on if a bird really had just flown like a bird the size of a dinosaur had just flown into the front of the car I think he would have said something so that probably didn't really happen Shh. um so I didn't mention that but I flipped out about the badger and um but no, no, <laughs> always sober, always sober and respectable in his eyes. Quite impressive. But um, anyway, so after, after, after Chris, which obviously you know he he would have turned into an absolute shitbag boyfriend if things had have kind of continued with him. Like there, there were times that I'd be like, you know, can we can we go back to yours? And he'd be like, we've well, got to walk. I'd be like, can we get a taxi? He'd be like, if you pay for it. <laughs> I was thinking you're like 21, I'm fucking like 15 or some shit, like, you won't even pay for a taxi, you ass bag. Um, so fortunately, fortunately I did not hang around him for very long. Um, soon after that I found somebody a lot cooler who I would eventually move in with um, after going to Whitby Gothic Weekend, and um, I won't go into all of that because that's a whole, a whole other chapter, but I do have to just briefly show you something that I, I don't really know why I still have this because I'm not a majorly sentimental person but I when you're when you're this young like something like this is is kind of kind of like really cool to you so you keep it and then you know when you when you leave home and you go live with that person for a few years you, you just leave it in your drawer of memories and if your mum doesn't disrupt it it's still there and then by the time you come back it's it's kind of sentimental and somehow now uh now it's, it's the year 2020 and I still I still have this so this is um the first time uh I met uh at at the goth club um I'd gone there on my own um and was just dancing and this time it was one of the really good nights it was one of the really really buzzing nights where there were like people everywhere and I remember seeing oh my god this is so weird actually because I still know these people Bex hi scary Bex if you're out there it was you and Vampy like Becky Vampy I saw you two um by the dance floor and I recognised you from NetGoth and from your Darkwave sites, um, which were like, you know, all the, all the goths had like Darkwave sites in those days, like, you know, pictures of, of you and, and the things that you did and your cool clothes and your cool clubbing outfits and stuff. And I had seen these two on, on these websites and I was like, oh my God, goth celebrities, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And uh, I didn't dare talk to them, but um, they, they ended up kind of, kind of entering my orbit and I still know them to this day. How, oh my god, I'd forgotten about that, that's so weird. But anyway, this particular night, I I remember that I, I think I was on my period and I felt like a fat fuck, so I was wearing my fat fuck clothes, which was a black and purple PVC skirt that was a little bit baggy, and also, oh my god, I still have this, I still have this, um like a blue velvet Jordache top that was that was also kind of baggy with kind of flowy, flowy sleeves, um, and I felt like if you're a bit bloated it doesn't really show it, so I was basically feeling like I'm pretty dressed down, like nobody's going to pay any attention to me, and um, 
I was in the middle of the dance floor and it was like towards the end of the night when I felt someone tap me on the shoulder and I turned around and there's the, this guy standing there who honestly he's there for such a short period of time I don't really even get to clock what he looks like I just, I just noticed you know skinny quite cute blonde guy and he kind of stuffs this <laughs> this exact thing he stuffs it into my hand and then he turns around and just legs it I, th I think he I think he may have may have like told me his name I told me him mine and then he just disappeared and I was like okay and um and this is this is this is what it says I'll cover the number it's not not his number anymore but I'll, I'll cover a portion of it anyway but what it says is call me if you like no problem if you don't Jay <laughs> that's what it says written on the back of a beer mat and that is from May 2001 and I still have it and uh yeah and it, it was it was such it was such a weird such a weird like come on because I was like well are we are we good like should we like chat or something like but it, I, I literally I went looking for him I was like you seem cool like let's let's hang out and he was so insecure that he was just like I, I don't even I don't want to face the rejection I'm just literally gonna give him my number and then I'm just gonna bail so I had to go home shortly after that and um I, I remember leaving it like I didn't phone him the next day I phoned him the day after that because that's the cool thing to do you seem desperate if you phone them the very next day you have to play the fucking stupid games like I don't know if I would still do that or not I probably wouldn't I'm, I'm not I'm not that caught up in stupid nonsense anymore but I, re I remember when I called him he was he was still like super insecure to the point um that he actually thought he was being pranked um when I when I called him and I, I was like yeah you know I'm it's, it's me from from the club like on on Friday I was wearing like purple tights and he was like are you sure like you you sound really different and I have had a lot of friends say that actually like friends I've only talked to in clubs and then I talk to them on the phone they're like but you so, like are you ill or something you sound really different I think because obviously in clubs you're yelling over the music and I, I, I'm pretty hyper in clubs I, I think my, my voice goes up about two octaves so they used to kind of like hi this is me and then they, 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 they get me on the phone it's like hi <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so so he was like he took some persuading that it was actually me and uh and then it turned out that actually we we had a bunch of stuff in common um you know like being being kind of both of us being pretty pretty like you know kind of fight for the cause vegetarians at the time and things like that um and uh both both being being miserable miserable depressed fuckers and uh and what ensued was was kind of a, a really a really really codependent and fucked up but also also really sweet teenage relationship and um I will show you I will cut his face out which is a shame because he was really fucking cute when he was young but um this is this is what we took on um on our first date we went into a photo booth like they used to be where they would give you a string of like different pictures and you could pull a bunch of different faces in them and stuff and uh and then we we got the the full photo thing out and we ripped it in half and he kept one half and I kept the other and also I still have that and um it's weird like we we don't talk to each other anymore I mean we were friends for a really fucking long time uh he's the guy that if you've got my book uh purple ghost is written um about him and about kind of you know why and how we don't talk to each other anymore but um but the weird thing is i still dream about him a lot like not never in any kind of like sexual contacts it's, it's always completely platonic but it's like my brain whenever my brain needs to fill in a in a storyline like it needs a friend role it always uses him as the actor but the thing is usually when I dream about him he he's like this he's he's like his like skinny kind of depressive long haired kind of kind of awkward teenage self who who was just I thought he was so beautiful like he he was really insecure about being kind of small and skinny and but that's that's totally my type and I, I still have this memory <laughs> I still have this this one really vivid memory of being 
at his mum's place, which was like it was this big kind of farmhouse in the country. Um, and it was usually, it was mostly summer that we were there. So there'd always be this like lovely kind of summer breeze blowing through the windows. And he was drying his hair just with like a towel wrapped around his waist. And I, I'm it's like, I, I'm, I so don't find people this attractive, like almost ever these days particularly. I don't remember the last time that I was genuinely like, that is a beautiful dude. But I, I, this memory, I was lying on the bed and he, he was like, he was blow drying his hair with, with just like a towel around his waist and like, he, you know, he had this like, you, you know, like like skinny guys, but they've they've kind of got like this really defined muscle and he was just like, this defined muscle and this perfect butt with like the towel and he's like blow drying his hair and it's like blowing in the wind and I'm like, oh my God. He's just like the most gorgeous and he's mine. <laughs> and, uh, so that was that was really cool. But yeah, to, to get to what was kind of the downside um, of having all this freedom um, was was the fact that I did get kind of pulled into the orbit of much older people um, when I was quite young, that I was I was like the baby of the scene for a really long time, which is why it's so weird to me now to like not be to to be to be kind of like 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 pretty much an elder goth now when for so long I was like I was the one being like patronized I I was like the baby I was the one who who didn't know anything and now I'm like fucking old as fuck and it's it's weird but um you know when when you are that that young and you you get a boyfriend who's like 5 years older you know and his friends mostly were were actually his age or older so i ended up with with kind of a pretty busy social calendar involving like people who were a lot older than me so obviously to me they they seemed super cool they were like way cooler than anyone my age um but that was that was the summer that high school ended for me because in those days over here high school used to end at 16 after that you were out you were free you could do whatever you wanted um and i had got into the really good college around here but that whole summer i'd spent that summer basically living with him going out to like goth things every weekend, being with like older people who were so much cooler. So when I got to college, even though there was, there was a group of really cool goth kids, particularly one girl, her name was Faye, but she told everyone she wanted to be called Faith instead because Buffy was big at that point and Faith was super cool. So she, she wanted to be called Faith. Um, if you're still out there, Faith, and you remotely remember this, this like awkward kid who was at college with you for all of two months and then they just fucked off. Uh, that's me. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so there, there was this group of like goth kids who were my own age um, and who seemed really cool. And if I hadn't have had that whole summer, if I had have spent that summer being a normal teenager, being like, no, you can't, you, you can't dress like a hooker and go into town to things that you're underage for. No, you've, you've got to stay at home and focus on college. And if that had been my life, I think I would have had more age appropriate experiences and interactions. And, you know, it would have been like, it's OK to be naive because we're all the same age and we're all naive because I, I am really entranced um, by by shows um about teenagers who who are completely open about losing their virginity particularly um i think 13 reasons why uh was was amazing with with like the main girl hannah i think and and the guy she loses her virginity to and the fact that they're both so open about like my god how does this feel to you is this is this like weird like did you want me to do you know all of that whereas for me it was always just like just lie just 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 tell them just tell some random dude that you've done it already that it's fine and just 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 get it over with forget about it and you know and and move on and um and I'd, I'd never really like regretted that in any way because I'd always just I'd always just find like romance and stuff cringy um but seeing you know that the, the the idea that you could actually be open about your naivety and you you could have you know that because there, there was there was something kind of beautiful about the the few brief interactions I did have on the goth scene with kids my own age um you know it was like you you can be as stupid and as young as and as naive as you want to be um and I, and I never really got to have that because when I got to college even though these kids were there and they were cool it was like well 
but I really miss my boyfriend and he's so much cooler and I have friends who are so much cooler and I, I don't want to do this, I want to, fuck this, no. Um, so I dropped out and went to live with him um, because his mum had just bought him a house, um, probably because she was sick of the sound of us fucking all over it. Um, so she, <laughs> she bought him a house, installed him in it, I moved in, uh, we went to Whitby Gothic weekend um, and I didn't go back to college until uh, 2010 <laughs> so uh, that was that but anyway it was I mean yeah it, equally equally if I had been banned from doing adult things and I'd had to live like a normal teenager I never would have met him and uh, I can't imagine what my life would have been without meeting him when he was like my best friend for like 15 years or something I, I can't I can't like I would be a completely different person, I guess. So how you know you, you can't really regret something if it took you to where you are and you like where you are. You can't you can't regret it that hard. But I do think it would have been cool to maybe be reined in a bit more and to maybe be kind of forced to have a few more <laughs> age appropriate interactions. But who knows, you know, like college college was kind of like I I hated it and um they they I chose all the wrong subjects they wouldn't let me do anything creative and I you know I've already made a video about my my experience uh with 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 the whole Columbine situation and uh and the fact that when I wrote a really gory poem I was totally put on report people fl you know they flipped out about it they literally thought I was I was gonna go and shoot up the whole high school like you know the, the whole town like I'd written about in this poem it's like it's fiction. We're in England. Where am I going to get this gun from? I don't even know how to use a gun. I've never even seen a gun in my life. This is clearly creative writing, but you know, so it was so not the place for me. I guess maybe I would have, maybe I would have just dropped out anyway. And if I hadn't have had those friends, then I just would have been a miserable, lonely dropout. So maybe it was all for the best. But uh, but yes, uh, not not really any rules as a kid, um, <laughs> as a teenager particularly, and. Uh, it is quite good. I, I, I do find it like I, ca I can't even imagine um, living with a family who, who won't let you fuck with your own hair. Um, you know, as long as you're not going to get kicked out of school or something for having purple hair, I really don't see why you shouldn't be able to have purple hair. I think, you know, when a kid gets to about the age of, I don't know, like 12, 13, I think you you let them make their own stylistic choices, don't you? Like, because my, my dad would occasionally like force me into certain outfits and fucked me off so much. Um, I, I would literally destroy things and pretend like I'd, I'd stick scissors in, in, like if he sent me off to put on a frilly dress I would like make holes in it and then I'd be like, no, oh, it's ripped, I can't wear it and I would get caught out on that sometimes and like told off and like made to wear it anyway but um, but no, like I, I find it so hard to like think, oh my god, your mom is like not letting you wear what you want to wear and it's, it's, it's not even, it's, it's just, it's just a bit spooky. It's not even, it's not even like slutty. Whereas, whereas the stuff that I would go out in was, was not only like gothy as fuck, but was also literally looked like a prostitute. I remember there was, there was one time at high school that again was with the girl I went to Sister Mercy with. Um, I'd lent her one of my PVC outfits and we'd gone to the shopping mall so we, we were being like proper mall goths for this day you know running around in our new rocks and our stripy tights and our little PVC dresses and our bad eyeliner and uh you know she bought uh Marilyn Manson's book like Long Hard Road Out of Hell or something and um I can't I can't remember what I bought but but oh I think I bought some book on paganism yeah we were we were just such fucking stereotypical wool goths like in you know go straight to the bookstore she goes by like, like like a Marilyn Manson book I'm there in like in the spirituality section looking for like um looking for like pagan books and stuff oh my god though I miss I miss that being like a thing because I, I feel like you don't see that anymore you know you don't see like underage teenagers underage kids you know in terrible makeup <laughs> Um, you know, just in, in these like crazy outfits being so stereotypically like that here, it doesn't exist anymore. But, but yeah, anyway, we'd, we'd been at that mall on the Saturday and on like the Monday or Tuesday when we went back to school, I remember my history teacher pulling me aside and, and being like, was it you I saw at the shopping mall on Saturday in that little leather dress? I was like, yeah, it was PVC, and uh, she she was clearly like, 
okay because I wasn't sure if it was you or like a prostitute but all right but anyway this is really long now so I'm going to shut up but uh, I would like to waffle more about past things because there's there's a lot there's a lot I haven't even said but it's been so nice to just just think back to these places because one one thing I've been experimenting with a lot recently is um hypnosis uh kind of ASMR type things on on YouTube it's really it's really interesting actually it doesn't doesn't really matter what the fuck they're hypnotizing you for just stick around for the for the actual hypnosis bit and then zone out but the, the thing I found is that when you get to this hypnotized stage you can you can have something that's halfway between a lucid dream and a daydream you, you think right I, I wanna I want to imagine being on a beach I want to imagine riding a horse and you can do it and it's so real that it's like you're, you're not there thinking oh my god I wish I was doing this for real you're like I am doing this for real and even like eating as well like you, you can eat in a in a hypnosis state like you know in your mind you you can imagine eating and you can taste everything it's like eating for real like dude this this is like a dieting tip i'm just just discovering hypnotize yourself and and eat imaginary cake but um but no i i've i've discovered how cool it is that you can go back through your memories like in a hypnosis state and you you can just be in them and you can see them so so real like and and, and around you again and uh, and so this, this video has, has reminded me of a lot of things. I need to go back and wander around inside my brain box while hypnotised by uh, by YouTube. The uh, Michael, what's his name? Michael... Michael s -s 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 something uh, is the very good guy. Um, I might link a video below if you're interested in going back through your own memories and perusing them and also making other ones up. You can you can go to imaginary places and do imaginary things too, so it's quite fun. But uh, anyway, <laughs> this is now very long, so I'm going to shut up. It's been quite nice to have a change of pace and to, uh, to just waffle at you and to remember things, because it is weird how much the world is changing, like subculture-wise, just, just, you know, the, the tribes of goths that you used to see everywhere and you just it's been so long since i've seen a tribe of goths let alone like a tribe of kind of young awkward looking goths which were kind of the cutest ones you know which is is why everyone's so fascinated these days with like 90s mall goths you know and the more the more awkward and the more like badly put together the outfits and the makeup are the more people love these photos because it's it's something that doesn't exist now that you know people posting photos of themselves in goth makeup online these days are so polished nobody looks young anymore nobody looks naive and innocent anymore and I think that was a really sweet thing but anyway that's that's a whole whole waffle for another time so I'm going to do jazz hands and disappear uh, so over and out bye bye <laughs> I hope this waffle hasn't bored you to death swoosh <laughs>